Hello and a very warm welcome to Science Monitor, your weekly update on what's happening in the field of science, technology and innovation in and around the country. I'm Ashwarya with you. From the first ever International Heritage Symposium and Exhibition organized in the country to the innovative technology developed by DRDO to heat the food packets without fire, we have plenty in store for you. So let us begin with the headlines. ISRO's communication satellite GSAT-30 launched successfully from French Guiana, the satellite to provide enhanced telecommunications and broadcast services. First International Heritage Symposium and Exhibition organized in Delhi, discussion on conservation and digitization of heritage. Technology to heat food without fire by DRDO's Defence Food Research Laboratory, a boon for the soldiers working at high altitudes. Inaugural workshop of India's first science and technology news agency, Vigyan Samachar, an endeavour to promote science news in the mainstream media. Now the news in detail. Indian Space Research Organization successfully completed its first mission of the year 2020. On 17th of January, ISRO's communication satellite GSAT-30 was launched from French Guiana aboard the Ariane 5 launch vehicle. This satellite will replace the INSAT 4A spacecraft services and will provide high-quality television and broadcasting services along with enhanced telecommunications. Here is a report. Space Research Organization's telecommunication satellite GSET-30 was launched successfully on 17th January into the geosynchronous transfer orbit from Koru Launch Base in French Guiana. According to the Indian Standard Time, India's first launch of the year occurred at 2.35 am when the European Space Agency's heavy lift launch vehicle Ariane 5 lifted off carrying the Indian satellite. GSA-30 spacecraft is a high-power communication satellite. It will replace the aging INSAT 4A spacecraft. The satellite is based on ISRO's standard I-3K satellite bus and will provide 12 normal C-band and 12 KU-band transponders. Weighing 3,357 kg, GSAT-30 is India's operational communication satellite which will replace the old satellite INSAT 4A. GSET-30 has greater coverage capacity and it will provide Indian mainland and islands coverage in KU band and extended coverage in C band to Gulf countries, Australia and a number of Asian countries. The communication payload of GSET-30 has been specially designed to deploy maximum transponders. These will be widely used for VSAT networks television uplinking, teleport services, digital satellite news archiving and DTH television services. According to ISRO, the designed in-orbit operational life of GSET-30 is more than 15 years and it will significantly speed up internet services, banking and telecommunication services. International Heritage Symposium was organized at the National Museum in New Delhi. The two-day event, which lasted from 15th to 16th of January, deliberated on the conservation, preservation and management of heritage in physical and digital space. An exhibition depicting the digitization of the heritage was also inaugurated on the occasion, which will run for a month. Here is a report. The first International Heritage Symposium and Exhibition was organized at the National Museum in Delhi. 
An important theme of this two-day symposium was digital heritage in Indian context. The event was organized by the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India and the Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi. The Department of Culture and Tourism is also involved in the Indian Digital Heritage Project. During discussions, the panelists deliberated on the need of preserving India's rich cultural heritage digitally. बहुत सारे मॉन्यूमेंट्स धीरे धीरे डिस्ट्रॉय हो जाते हैं उनका कोई नामों निशान तक मिट जाता है तो जब तक हम उनको फिजिकल प्रिजर्वेशन पे ध्यान देंगे पर आल्सो डिजिटल प्रिजर्वेशन पे ध्यान देंगे जैसे कि पुरानी मैन्युस्क्रिप्ट्स हैं अब संस्कृत की हैं ये सब कई भी लुप्त हो गई अगर वो हमारे पास डिजिटल होता तो आज उसको हम वापस रिक्रिएट कर सकते थे the efforts in the field of digital preservation have increased in the last 5 years under the initiative of the government of india and different technology institutes and organizations have collaborated with startups working in this field to produce digital forms of the ancient structures some of these digital representations are a part of the month long exhibition that was inaugurated on the first day of the event the models that come alive using virtual reality and augmented reality are a culmination of different technologies to produce the exact replicas of the ancient structures on different scales pehle pure ek monument ka laser scanning hota hai laser scanning data ko leke hum log uske digital models banate hain wo digital models ko 3d print karte hain to aapko jaisa monument hai wahan pe wo actually usi true scale mein kisi bhi size mein aap chahe chote mein bade mein aap usko 3d print karke logon ko dikha sakte hain the endeavor that started in 2014 with the models of the famed hampi temples is soon going to become a revolution The exhibition displayed digital models of the ancient temples such as the Sun Temple of Konark and Kashi Vishwanath Temple of Varanasi along with the structures of historical importance such as Rani ki Vav and the Taj Mahal through this technology one can view the original form of these structures and gain a life like experience of visiting these monuments यहाँ पर थ्री थ्री डी मॉडल्स थे यहाँ पर आपने टेक्नोलॉजी का बहुत अच्छा यूज़ किया है जिससे पीपल इंटरेक्ट हो रहे हैं कि ओके कुछ हमें इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग देखने को मिल रही है अब इसमें आपको चिल्ड्रंस में जाएंगे तो आप उसको एक गेम की तरह से आप सिखा रहे हो बच्चों को कि ओके आप देखो इसके अंदर है क्या चीज़ In addition to ancient heritage and historical monuments this technology is also being used to preserve the dance forms on the verge of extinction. The use of digital technology will not only preserve our ancient heritage but also help to save our ancient data and knowledge. Mysore based Defence Food Research Laboratory has designed and developed many food products and technologies for the benefit of our armed forces. Now the laboratory has developed an innovative food packing that can reheat the food without the use of fire or oven. To know how this innovation works, let us see this report. Our brave soldiers overcome many difficulties to safeguard the country. In areas like Siachen, soldiers not only have to remain vigilant but also have to endure cold and hostile weather conditions to survive. It is obvious that getting a hot meal in such inhospitable areas is a luxury for the soldiers. Understanding the problems of such areas, the Defence Research and Development Organisation's Mysuru-based lab, Defence Food Research Laboratory, has developed an innovative technology. The laboratory which prepares ready-to-eat meals for the soldiers has now developed a self-heating thermopack to heat these food items. This innovation was also displayed at the DRDO pavilion during the recently held Indian Science Congress. This is basically a self-heating system wherein it is used for armed forces where there is no facilities to cook their hot food. So this is a packet of food which is there. This is a suji halwa which has been placed here. There is basically an exothermic reaction which will be involved. The self-heating technology of the thermopack is based on an exothermic reaction. One section of this pack contains certain chemicals that are connected to a bag of chemical water provided on the upper side of the pack 
and a different section is provided to keep the packed food items. As soon as the bag of water is pierced with the needle provided in the pack, the water reaches the chemicals and heat is generated due to an exothermic reaction and this warms the food sufficiently within 8 to 15 minutes. These are in two individual compartments and the food will be in, uh, immediately he heated up and the uh, soldier can immediately open the packet and have hot food for consumption. This is largely required for areas where there is sub-zero temperatures and army requires hot food. The lead thermopack is designed to keep the food items away from the chemicals. So the chemicals and food items do not come in contact and the food remains safe. This technology is another example of the quality food solutions provided by the DRDO DFRL to ease the life of the soldiers. It's time for a short break here. Stay tuned as we have more interesting reports for you. Welcome back. After the break, you're watching Science Monitor. Vigyan Prasar, under the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, organized the inaugural workshop of Vigyan Samachar, the first science and technology news agency of India at Prithvi Bhavan in New Delhi. The agency is an attempt to increase the representation of science news in mainstream media. Vigyan Samachar will provide newsworthy science and technology developments and achievements of various organizations to all the media sources to sensitize the science communication among all the stakeholders. Let us have a look at the report. The representation of the science and technology developments and achievements of Indian scientists and organizations is quite limited in the mainstream media. And to fill this gap, Vigyan Prasar has been entrusted to run a science and technology news agency. On 14th January, the inaugural workshop of this news agency was organized at the Prithvi Bhavan in New Delhi and it was attended by the secretaries of all the departments related to the Ministry of Science and Technology and Ministry of Earth Sciences. Basically, what the mainstream media might feel that science doesn't make that kind of a news as much sensational as what you actually get to hear every day. But it's our job to actually convince mainstream media that they should also carry this news. But Vigyan Samajaya's objective essentially is to that, is they will carry this news and will try to take this news to college students, school students, university professors and everywhere. Vigyan Samachar will work like a news agency and collect and provide all newsworthy information related to the Department of Science and Technology, Ministry of Earth Sciences, Department of Biotechnology and Department of Scientific and Industrial Research and the associated science institutes and laboratories. Now there is a scientific social responsibility in which every scientist has the responsibility of the समाज के हर आदमी को जो वो कर रहा है वहां तक वो बात पहुंचा सके जिससे वो लाभान्वित हो सके अपने जीवन के स्तर को बेहतर कर सके और एक सबसे बड़ी बात जो वैज्ञानिक सोच जिसकी हम हमेशा बात करते हैं उसको जमीनी लेवल पे ग्राउंड पे लाके उसको प्लॉजिबल बना सके उसको प्रैक्टिकली रियलाइजेबल कर सके उसके लिए प्रयास है on this occasion, a reconciliation ceremony was also organized to analyze the 5th India International Science Festival and to discuss its achievements. The officials congratulated and thanked the coordinators of the festival on its successful organization. And now let's have a quick look at some other science and technology developments happening in and around the country in our segment, Science Express. The recent eruptions of the second most active volcano of Philippines, the Taal, has caused a major upheaval in the lives of the local people residing near the volcano range. The volcano that erupted on 12th and 13th January has left everything blanketed by heavy ash. The scientists are watching the volcanic activities closely to sense another explosive eruption. The eruptions have also affected the weather at Manila and also led to the discontinuation of the flight services. In view of the danger, the administration has urged the people to leave the risk zone. Authorities also fear tsunami if the volcano erupts again. 
The 145th Foundation Day of the India Meteorological Department was observed on 15th January. The department, now functioning under the Ministry of Earth Sciences, was established in 1875. Professor Ashutosh Sharma, Secretary, Department of Science and Technology, was the chief guest of the occasion and inaugurated the Foundation Day celebrations organized at the Dr. Ambedkar International Center. During the program, Director General of India Meteorological Department, Mr. Mrityunjay Muhapatra, outlined the major achievements of the department in the past years. On this occasion, the department honoured its employees for outstanding work and also presented the awards to the winning students of a competition. An Indian medical institute has won a US patent for developing turmeric-based curcumin fibrin wafer for the treatment of cancer. According to researchers at the Sri Chitra Tirunal Institute of Medical Sciences and Technology in Thiruvananthapuram, the anti-cancer molecule curcumin found in turmeric can be directly planted in the affected cells through their devised delivery system. And this method will only destroy the cancer-affected cells. This research is funded by the Indian Council of Medical Research and the US patent will boost the industry's confidence regarding the research. In 2019, the world's oceans reached the highest temperature ever recorded, especially between the surface and the depth of 2,000 meters. The related data is compiled by a team of scientists from all over the world on behalf of the Institute of Atmospheric Physics IAP of China. According to the scientists, man-made emissions are responsible for this heating as oceans absorb 90% of the heat generated by the emission of greenhouse gases. The rising temperature of the oceans can prove to be very destructive to the Earth's climate. Time for another short break but don't go anywhere as we'll be right back. Welcome back again. You're watching Science Monitor. During the recent uh, New Delhi World Book Fair, an attempt was made to attract more and more children towards the science by involving them in various interesting and fun-filled activities. While Vigyan Prasar displayed interesting science books and similar materials to attract the children, CSIR's National Institute of Science Communication and Information Resources organized a science a cartoon workshop and a panel discussion on communicating science to children. Let us see the report to know more. A well-written book is capable of instilling love for any subject, including science. The enthusiasm exhibited by the children towards the science books during the New Delhi World Book Fair reconfirmed this statement and raised the hopes of connecting more and more children with the world of science. Vigyan Prasar, an autonomous organization working under the Department of Science and Technology, has been doing the same for decades through its books and the other mediums of communication. जो भी हम विज्ञान का साहित्य बच्चों के लिए करें तो उसमें पार्टिसिपेटरी मॉडल को ही अपनाएं क्योंकि जब तक हम उसमें इंगेज बच्चों को नहीं करेंगे उनके स्तर को नहीं जान पाएंगे उनकी बौद्धिक स्तर को हम नहीं जांच पाएंगे तब तक हम मौलिक साहित्य और रचनात्मक साहित्य हम उपलब्ध नहीं करा सकते हैं during the World Book Fair, CSIR National Institute of Science Communication and Information Resources organized a science cartoon workshop and a panel discussion on communicating science to children. The workshop introduced the students to the concept of communicating scientific ideas through the medium of cartoons. And the panel discussion emphasized on the ways to use music poetry and similar arts for conveying the ideas of science. के साइंस फेयर प्रोग्राम्स में बच्चों को एक इनफॉर्मल प्लेटफॉर्म मिलता है जहां पे वो साइंस को रोचक तरीके से जानने की कोशिश करते हैं जैसे कि साइंटून के माध्यम से छोटे बच्चे हैं उनका अटेंशन लेने के लिए हम उनको कार्टून्स बनाना सिखाते हैं तो उस बच्चे को साइंस में मजा आता है 
science communicators used lively experiments and playway methods to introduce and explain scientific concepts to children. आपको अपने चेयर से बिना आगे झुके चेयर से उठना है बिना आगे झुके तो ये आगे झुके थे कि नहीं झुके थे जिन चीज़ों में बच्चों का इंटरेस्ट ज़्यादा आता है जैसे कि स्टोरीज़ के रूप में इन लोगों ने हमें साइंस की थोड़ी चीज़ें बताई एक्सपेरिमेंट्स करवाए तो बच्चों को भी मज़ा आया तो हाँ इन सब चीज़ों से हम बच्चों में साइंस के लिए और ज़्यादा कर सकते हैं Innumerable communication mediums are available today and science organizations are using these mediums rightly to expand their horizons in an effort to bring every section of the society closer to science. Hali mein humne aur bhi kai cheeze try ki hain jaise ki yahan pe World Book Fair mein hum National Book Trust ke sath milke humne ek Sign Tune workshop ka aayojan kiya. Science cartoon ek bahut hi imaginative तरीका होता है साइंस के आइडियाज को कम्युनिकेट करने का टू प्रमोट द साइंटिफिक टेम्पर इन एनी सोसाइटी इट इज इम्पोर्टेंट टू इनकरेज द यंगर जनरेशन टू वर्ड साइंस एंड द एफर्ट्स मेड बाय डिफरेंट साइंस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एट द न्यू डेली वर्ल्ड बुक फेयर वो डेफिनेटली अ स्टेप इन दिस डायरेक्शन And finally, it is time to know what are the contributions of this week in the field of science and technology. So let us see our special segment, History of Science. On 23rd January 1960, a specially constructed submersible vehicle, Bathurst for Trieste, descended 35,810 feet into the Pacific Ocean to reach the Challenger Deep. Challenger Deep is the deepest point known on Earth in the Marianas Trench near the island of Guam. Engineered by Swiss scientist August Picard, the Trieste had a 50 feet long hull filled with gasoline and lead weights to control the buoyancy and a spherical steel cabin of 6 feet diameter weighing 14 tons to withstand the deep sea pressure of 16,000 pounds per square inch. August Pickard's son Jack Pickard and a US Navy Lieutenant Don Walsh made the 5-hour descent in the spherical steel cabin and spent 20 minutes at the bottom making a diving record that remained unchallenged for nearly 52 years. Before landing on the surface the two men also saw a fish-like creature and spiked the curiosity of the biologists who wondered about the presence of life at the bottom of the ocean. On 21st January 1912, German-American biochemist Konrad Emil Bloch was born. Bloch shared the 1964 Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine with Fyodor Leinen for discoveries concerning the natural synthesis of cholesterol and fatty acids. Bloch identified the chemical process by which the body turns acetic acid into cholesterol. He discovered the point at which it is possible to regulate the amount of cholesterol the body produces. He also discovered that high levels of cholesterol in the bloodstream cause fatty deposits on the inner walls of arteries which may lead to constricted blood flow and increase the chances of blood clotting and heart attack. And that's all in today's edition of Science Monitor. Do tell us how do you like our program? You can send your feedback and suggestions through email. Our email ID is news at vigyanprasar.gov.in. You can also write in to us at Vigyan Prasar, 5th floor, Prithvi Bhavan, Lodhi Road, New Delhi, 11003. We'll meet you again next week with new informative stories on science, technology and innovation. Till then, stay tuned to Rajya Sabha TV and think scientifically. Thank <laughs> you.